Here is a story from Bob. And I heard this when I was at that executive benefits planning firm. So Bob had owned a large construction company and he actually had seven whole life insurance policies, some of which were older than me when he said this. So he had had them for a long time. What he said was this, aside from the interest in my company, meaning the his business interest, what he owned, my whole life insurance policies have been my best performing asset. Every year, my money increases. Last year, I paid a $12,000 premium for one of my policies, and the cash value increased by almost $40,000. What he really liked about it was that it was a peace of mind product. No matter what happened, his value just continued to appreciate over time. So here's a popular strategy we see quite a bit with individuals that have excess cash in the bank. So excess cash is all relative to, to you and your specific situation. But if someone has money in the bank and it's in there because it's safe and easy to access, what we'll often see is someone will, someone will move some of that excess cash into a policy over a short period of time, maybe three to five years. And after that, they say, I don't want to have to be on the hook to make more payments. If I like it, I'll add more. But my plan is to take this money here, move it into the policy, and I'm done. And you can do exactly that. So we've got some examples here. If someone's got 50,000, 500,000, 5 million, it doesn't matter. We can move it into a policy, in this case, over five years, sometimes less, less uh, a shorter number of years, sometimes more, depends on your situation. Let's look at an example of this. So here we've got Lance, and this is someone that started a policy with us back in 2019. On the left, we have the original projection, the original illustration. So his plan was to pay in 120K per year for five years. That's $600,000. On the right is what actually happened. So he paid what he said he was going to pay, which doesn't always happen and that's okay, but he did. We've got his cash value. What's highlighted in yellow there is his break-even point when he got his money back. So he's got maximum cash value year one, 105 in cash value. That, by the way, is the biggest drawback to whole life insurance, that upfront hit. When people ask that question, it is the upfront hit. That's the, the worst part about any policy. But here, it is maximized in the first year to minimize that upfront hit. Took between three to four years to get his money back, and it keeps on compounding. So when we look at this, again, it's a real policy. He got his money back between three and four years. At the end of year four, he's moved $480,000 into the policy. He's got 485. Pays nothing extra after five years. Now he has mentioned that he probably will keep adding because he likes it, but the plan was to stop and he easily can, but his cash value keeps on growing. When you look at that cash value growth, it's growing by 10, 20, $30,000 per year. And that's when he's not paying anything in. So the constant compounding is constant. <laughs> So a question that comes up sometimes is, what if I don't have $120,000 per year to put in a policy? Like, will it still work for me? Or is this only for rich people and banks, people that have a lot of money? So the answer is, it can work with any amount of money. The most important piece though, just to reiterate this, is that the policy must, must, must be set up for high cash value from day one. If it's not, that's where people have buyer's remorse, 